Natalie, as a diehard activist, you know, I, I read several articles actually that you know that you, you is it, and you tell me if this is true. Did you walk all the way from New York to D.C. Um, and then, you know, you arrived in the Capitol, and then tell us about the twenty-five foot letters that you tagged there on the street. Well, in two thousand fifteen, I was doing um, a performance art piece inside of a plexiglass box where I was topless and a plexiglass box on top of an American flag um, for seven hours a day, seven days a week for three weeks. And um, I didn't know really what that um, performance was about. So I said that it was about the lack of movement within the women's movement in, in America. And I had no idea why the women's movement wasn't moving. I could just feel that it wasn't. And at that time, Sarah Beth came to me and told me, the reason why the women's movement isn't moving is because women don't have equal rights in the United States Constitution. And so that's when I came up with Natalie White for Equal Rights, which was a show at the White Box Foundation in New York where I had large installations all about the Equal Rights Amendment. And then following that, um, following that show, I did a performance art piece where I walked for 16 days, 250 miles from New York to DC. And the day after I arrived, I tagged ERA now with red paint and a brush. Um, I wasn't arrested on the spot. In fact, I, I did it and I walked away. And um, then I was arrested a week later. Um, they flew to DC uh, police office, two Capitol police officers from DC to New York to arrest me. I wasn't there. I was in DC the whole time. Um, and um, when I found out, I found out from my roommate that they had like kicked down my door to like come in and get me. So I called a friend of mine, Ron Kuby, who is a famous civil rights attorney in New York, and he found out that there was a warrant out for my arrest. So I decided to, you know, give myself up, and um, I spent a night in jail. And um, at, at a later, this was in August, uh, early August, and so um, they decided to press charges against me. And in September of 2016, before we knew who was going to be president and before we even knew that there would be a women's march, they set my trial date for January 17th. So everyone came into town for the women's march. And also, you know, all of, I was living in DC at the time and a bunch of my friends came and stayed with me, including Kamala, including Lizzie, including Sarah Beth, and also Patricia Arquette came into town, but she wasn't staying with me. And they were all, um, you know, character witnesses in my case. And, you know, I, so in September, I decided, I was like, I can't believe that these people are going to actually come after me for what was water soluble kids paint. Um, if it had rained that day, they wouldn't be even needed to wash away, you know, any of the letters. Um, so I decided to represent myself in court. So I went like all Abby Hoffman style on them. And I learned how to be a trial court lawyer for three months. I read like every law book you possibly could. It's not that hard. I don't know why anybody thinks that it's that difficult. We made the trial into a performance art piece, which ended up getting, you know, ahead of the Women's March, getting a lot of great publicity for the Equal Rights Amendment and really got the ERA into the zeitgeist of what everybody was talking about. They didn't speak about the Equal Rights Amendment on stage at all, which really surprised me because, you know, the Equal Rights, like if violence against women is a ship and equal and pay equality is a ship and immigration is a ship and then the ERA is the tide that rises, that brings them all together. Time ran out for the Equal Rights Amendment today. The 24-word statement pledging equality for women fell three states short of ratification. Women and men still do not have equal rights. There's no guarantee against discrimination. If you can pay a woman less than a man, then that's a huge savings to a company. We're not talking about a glass ceiling here. We're talking about a brick wall. Mothers are much less likely to be recommended for management positions. The laws that I thought were going to protect me didn't. Women are the means of reproduction. If we didn't have wombs, we would be fine. We thought 
that the birth control issue was settled. It is far from settled. Because our reproductive destiny is our economic destiny. It will affect our health outcomes and our economic outcomes for our, us and our children for the rest of our lives. How can it be our country has more homeless women and children than any other industrialized nation? Unless they are economically autonomous, all other aspects of empowerment will be defeated. He pulled the gun out and he held it to my throat and he told me that I was going to die that day. The police do not respond sometimes to violence against women in the same way that they respond to other crimes. And we're being arrested at greater rates than we used to be arrested for. We have something like 35% of all the female prisoners in the world. A 13-year-old child was arrested for prostitution. Rape is the most common violent crime on American college campuses today. Victims are afraid to come forward. Perpetrators know that they can get away with it. I don't know what it's going to take for people. Those are our girls. This is our country. These are our daughters. And this is why it's very important for us to be aware of who our lawmakers are and how much they're prioritizing women.